is that we're going to throw a sectional box that in the same manner, but you're going to use the clay extruder for your top piece. So I'm not going to actually throw a finished sectional pot or a piece that I'm even going to try to finish today. What I'm going to do is just throw a donut ring, if you will, for the bottom, which would be no different than the top edge of a pot that you want to continue to work up on. Okay? So with that being said, just like you were to throw any other thing, I'm going to throw this. And I'm going to speed things up with the heat gun so I can get it really nice and firm, just like you would if you were to actually throw a finished, you know, a, something that you want to finish as a sectional form. So you'll kind of have to bear with me as we get that down to a certain point. I'll just tilt the camera and we'll move forward. I wedge the clay, you know, maybe 20 inch time. It's not a big deal for what I'm doing. I'm not trying to keep this. It might juggle a little more just because I didn't wedge it very well. Remember, if you put the work in over there, It'll benefit you to be able to when you're at the wheel. Um, Philip was even talking to me earlier about if you take like slurry and you try to mix it back in and reconstitute your clay, the thing is, remember, you're not a machine, so you're gonna have to put a lot of time in to get that slurry to mix in with your clay so you don't have hard and soft spots in your clay, which doesn't seem like a problem, and it wouldn't be if you left it for maybe a week before you sit down and throw it, because it would all rehydrate to the same consistency. But if you sit down on the same day and do that, you're going to probably have to wedge that clay like 200 times to get it to work. So just a side note for that. Otherwise, nothing fancy. It's the same clay I've been using the last time with a two clay body. Um, yeah. Any questions so far on what we're doing today and moving forward? You're going to have more time. The plan is just to get this out into a form and shape, if you will, and then let you guys get back to work and keep getting you on track to have something hopefully out of the class that's finished, right? So whether that means trimming your work or even, you know, continuing to make another piece, maybe, you know, we're trying this option kind of like what I'm doing now, that's okay. That's definitely an option. So you can see that I'm not even going to comb my clay up. I literally do not care about this piece making it, so I don't need to worry about like all that coning and all that fancy jazz that you would probably want to normally put into your clay you know, for evenness, consistency, all that stuff. I'm just trying to get a nice flat wide piece so I can show you how to use this technique. So I just made a pancake if you will. I'm going to open it up just like I normally would. I'm going to go all the way down the wheel head just so I can make use of as much clay as possible. So I'm going to open this up. Make myself a nice big donut. As I do this, you know, um, I'm still applying that pressure downward on that clay as I open it. You can do it right handed too, you can do it left handed. It's whatever hand you feel that you're probably going to be the most strong and confident when you get that open. Um, I know I told you guys last time you guys seen me do the donut thing, I was using my right hand. I think that my right hand is. Uh, weaker than I anticipate it being. <laughs> with how I was talking about with the issues that I have with my right hand, because um, I found that if I tried it with my left hand and it just opened up like butter, which is how it should be. But I was struggling to get it to open with my right hand. So I don't know if, uh, maybe things are getting worse with my right hand. <laughs> so just remember when you're doing stuff in this class, even outside of this class, that you want to take care of your body. Don't use this class in a manner to wreck your, your body. Remember all the things that we've talked about, the proper form and that kind of stuff. Try and not to muscle the clay, if you will. Um, it will really benefit you. Because if not, even throwing can wreak havoc you know, upon your joints. So keeping that in mind. You know, if you start feeling an issue, talk to your instructor. Um, talk to me, wherever the case may be. You know, I would rather you come talk to me than just continue doing it. If your instructor doesn't know, definitely come, come talk with me if you continue this. From this point, I got a donut. Just a basic donut opened up. I'm going to literally just pull this up, okay? Now, remember last week we put the groove downward so you could open up and put the, the top part down. That I'm going to do the opposite. So you see how the one is going up this time? The top part goes down and sits on it? That's how this time it's going to be around. So that's why I still left that drawing up there. So when I throw this, I'm going to do the opposite of what I did right I'm going to set with this tool the last time where you put that groove in there. I'm not going to do that this time because the, the device that we're going to use, the actual, um, what do I want to call that? I have a total brain back here. 
You have the extruder, the die for the extruder. There we go. You just had to get the word in my mind for me. That die has that groove put into it already. So I don't need to worry about it. What I do need to worry about is not going too thin, you know, because I still want to be able to pull up just like I'm going to remember I'm going to leave some of that girth down there because I just need it there. And what I'm do. And double rib everything. I personally like to do that no matter what. Just make sure that it's solid. You know, if you're going to double rib, it's up to you on what side you're going to use. You can use the round side. Or you can use the flat side, it depends on what you're doing. If I'm trying to go straight up, remember, as you flex that rib, it's going to turn to a flat rib. Right? Up against everything. So I'm going to use the round side personally. But you know, if you find that you don't want to use that and you want to use the other, well, and it works for you, is it wrong? No, by no means is it wrong. So by double ribbing, I'm really just compressing the clay, making sure it's staying where I want. And I'm also getting rid of any inconsistencies in my work going up. I'm also going to come in and take off the top edge so I make sure I've got a nice even area so I can move up. Whenever you use your needle tool, remember always to the right and slide in, kind of like a record player. I'm going to take off just a little bit on the top edge. All right, go up to the side, looking fancy. That top edge, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to compress it to a V shape. Get that wet. I personally literally like to use my fingers in a V shape to do it. However, you feel comfortable, make it into a V shape, a V shape ish man, okay? Round it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be a complete V because the die that we have is more of like a U. So, really, something like that is fine. Just a slight round of edge. You can even come in, use your chamois if that's your cup of tea, use your chamois and round out that edge. That's perfectly fine to do also, okay? So I'm going to kill the camera because all I'm going to do is for about 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, however long it takes to get this firmed up and set up um, to get this ready to, to add a section. So it's going to feel just like what it did last time when you guys see me go to add a section on something. Now envision that this is the top edge of a pop. So if I had a pop, however big you want to go with it to beginning, this would be your top edge to that piece. So whether it's out in, whatever the case is, I'm just showing you distinctly how to use that technique tonight so you can move forward with using it. And I'll show you that this time. Right. So I'm going to kill the camera, get the heat in this up, and when we turn it back on, we'll talk a little bit more about the dye that's in there and the shape of it and what that's going to look like and then we extrude it kind of go about the then. Alright? So in this time, you guys can actually go back to work on your stuff. So Esther... That was quick. Well, it's, it's a smaller amount of clay, right? So it's going to stiffen up a lot faster for you. Um, which is a, a very positive thing for you guys because you have more work time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll just keep moving along really like fast. Oh, you're fine. What you gonna do? Um, one thing to think about with this next this next technique when you use the coil extruder is that you don't need calipers. So this is really nice because you don't have to stop and keep taking measurement to Cause flip you, your work. Cause you're gonna attach. The way that you want it to look. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna well that, and you're gonna attach. A coil on there essentially. So what your coil looks like for the the coil extrusion die that I've made for you guys, and I should probably tilt the camera so you can see the chalkboard when I'm doing this. Oh, so, gonna lose that one, yes. yeah. So we'll get in here. I'll just use this small space that's in here. The die, what we're gonna use, remember we did this angle for the bottom. The top die would essentially be the same shape, right? Except that the die is not a triangular shape. So the die is a U shape. So it kind of looks like that, like a spaceship with the reverse bottom. Okay? That's what your die looks like. Only it's at an off angle, as you'll see, because I want to give you guys as much height gain out of that die as you can possibly get, okay? So inside that die, put it in just like you normally know, would. How many of you guys hopefully have all used the clay extruder in other classes? Yeah, you're familiar with doing it, so we don't need to cover that, right? So make sure you get your bolts cranked on nice and tight. If you don't, you're going to lose clay as you're doing it because it'll squish out in other areas, right? So just make sure that you crank down for you. Don't over tighten it. You don't need to go crazy with it. But you definitely want it on there tighter, if you will. With that being said, uh, we are going to scratch the top of this piece just like we did with the last one, you know, to add a section on it, right? So I'm going to use just my fancy scraping tool, whatever you got for that. You know, I just happen to have a beam tool that 
has that. That was one of those last tools I bought. I kind of liked it because it's a needle tool on the back side and I can come in and very quickly, you know, it's more of a controlled area. You want to add an area for that to attach, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you scratch it up. How, how, um, uh, how dry is that right now? Come feel it. It's just like last time. So I would say it's not really leather hard. It's in between somewhere, you know? Yeah. Um, I invite you guys to definitely feel it just like you would of last time. You know, check out the claim to what you're, you're feeling. The difference is, is that you now are going to extrude your coil and bring your coil and set it on there, okay? The problem is the coil extruder only can extrude so much at one time. So you may have to stop and fill the extruder with more clay, which is fine. You're just going to have another seam mark in there. So you just got to be aware of your seam marks when you're throwing of how they are. And we'll talk about that when we get there, okay? So I'm going to extrude out a nice long coil, as long as I can get it. Which is clearly not going to get me all the way around. Do you need help? No, it's literally just out of clay at this point in time. So you can see by the shape, for one, I pushed my clay through there really fast. See how I tore it up? It's not the end of the world. Not concerned about it. If I would have went slower, that wouldn't have happened. Sometimes if the die is um, the wrong angle in there too, it'll extrude and tear like that, which this clay is honestly just on the side of where it's too wet, really is what problem is. So it's just coming out of this tearing. Oddly enough, it's not that it's too wet necessarily, it's more that it hasn't aged. <laughs> I've reused this clay the whole class since and just keep doing it with it. So I don't necessarily worry about scratching that up through there. You can if you want. You know, if you want to drag your tool through here and scratch that up, it ain't gonna hurt anything. But it's pretty soft anyway, so Yeah, it's it's really soft. What I'm more or less worried about is getting this wet and dragging a damp sponge through there. Okay. With that being said, something to think about since I have all these tear marks is all those marks. How is that clay going to exit my hands where these tears are? Personally, I would rather have all those jigsaws pointed away from me. So as they're coming through, I can get them mashed in. Okay. So clearly, as you can see though, right, I don't have enough to go all the way around. So I'm going to set this on there. See how nice and easy it is to be able to set it on there rather than like identifying and getting it right on the clipping. So you can see how by taking sections like this though, for large, large, wide mouth days, if you will, or pot of any sort, you can easily attach your sections on, okay? So with that, and I just kind of come in and make sure it's stuck. I'm not really going crazy yet with, you know, attaching anything, because I still got to get a whole other piece on here. See how I'm missing it. Now the thing is to think about, I don't want a flat cut for me personally, on the edge where it meets. But I'm not going to cut this yet. What I'm going to do is take my next piece and set it next to it and cut both pieces at the same time. So that way I know that the angle will be the same for both parts. All right? So I'm going to kill the camera one more time just while I reload. As you're doing it though, you can see that groove mark that I'm talking about. Right? If you were to do a coil, you wouldn't have the groove mark. So you just really have to make sure your bond is slipping scored really well. Otherwise, you know, you're going to come apart. So like I said, that's, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't do that. I've done them before. I like that it's almost like, what would you say? Three different polar coils on top, except you've got that whole thing. Exactly. So this is probably the most important part, though. If I set this on here and just have a straight seam bond, if you will, like right here where it meets, seam to seam, it's the same thing as we talked about. The more surface you can allow it, the better off you're going to be. What do you guys think is the proper angle? That, that should meet at because you don't want it flat in my honest opinion you can do it flat but i believe there's a better way to get to it what do you guys think for your angle think of how the clay is exiting your fingertips is there a way that you would do it for cutting your bond oh yeah it's an angle right yeah but which angle do i go out or do i go in probably go in in why because then it smooths over exactly so does it make sense so if I go in like this, right, as the clay is exiting my fingers, that long bond is wrapping around my fingers to exit. So this is standard drawing. It would be the opposite for Philip where he throws left-handed. Right. So whichever side exit your fingers, the clay should be tapered to that. The outside should be the last on your fingers, right? So when I come to this, I'm going to actually lift this back off a little bit and lay them next to each other to cut my mark. And I still mess up. Does someone have just a regular pedaling knife that I can use? Because I've got my short one, like a goofball. 
I got one, sorry. So you need something longer to be able to cut through both of your angles. And I grabbed my short one. Why I did that is... I don't care if it's clean shape, bad shape, great shape. I just need a longer look. So literally I'm going to take that and I'm going to... It doesn't have to be dramatic, right? I just want the angle to match from that inside edge to the outside edge. So you can see how I'm barely taking off any on both of these, but they'll line up. The other thing is you don't want to go down into your other piece, right, that you've already done. You're literally just trying to give a slight angle to it. See now how that is not a flat angle where it's going to be less likely to tear and your angles meet up perfect. Now if I was going to attach that, slip and score both of those two. And I'll take a second, scratch it up. As you can see, it's trying to stick on its own. I don't really need to do a whole lot to get this bad boy to stick. This cannot stick. This end, I want to be stuck. So I'm going to come in, stick it, make sure that I'm on my beam, if you will. This is the one benefit about that coil, though, and the die that we have, is that the die has that free line centered part. Or if you just do a normal coil, it's going to kind of be problematic for you in the sense that you got to think about, is it leaning out? You're going to have an automatic lean out on your piece. It's leaning in, it's going to lean inward. But that benefits you too because as you're doing this, you can lean this inward and start to throw it right, right, right away. It's already got your angle there, so you can just continue forward. It's the same thing as when you're doing the sectional pieces. If you just keep going up, well, then you're going to have a piece that just goes up. Right? So just think about that. So, same thing with here. For me, I would put it to the same side, right? Except this needs to be on the inside, correct? The cut, because I want this to exit through my fingers. Did I lose you guys on that part? No. No? Okay. I don't think it's rocket science, but some people think it's magic, but I'm like, not really. You can see I'm not being very careful about how I'm doing this. It's not the end of the world. Except this might present me a problem as we're going down. What is that? Dry corn. Too dry. It's not necessarily dry. What was right there that I stacked? Air bubble. Air bubble. Mm -hmm. There's an air bubble there. It's not right there, but there's an air bubble there that I stacked. And then right here, it's where it's just cracking. And there's an air bubble in there. I can feel it. I'm working. So I'm not going to slip and score that one, just because I'm not worried about it. What I'm going to do is just kind of make sure that I'm set on here. I want to make sure it's actually attached. Okay? I'm going to go in, mend my seams just kind of slightly before I move forward. I'm going to make sure I don't have any crazy, crazy tear marks like that one I'm worried about. It's going to be interesting. Because I just keep overworking this poor clay. Alright, now that I have that part done, then I'm going to come in and start to smooth out the inside of it. Okay? And the outside. You want to worry about those lips first before you start to fill up. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Alright. Because if you don't get that attached just like before, you're going to have a problem. Are you kind of like pushing down against the lip? Yep, I'm just trying to push that lip inward, and I'm kind of even going from the top right above the lip and throwing downward in reverse. Because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that that lip is actually attached to the clay. So you can see how I'm creating a groove. That's fine. I'm just trying to make sure that there's some clay actually attached right there. Now, the thing to think about is if you have a crazy oblong shape and you start trying to throw that, well, that's going to present you a problem. So think about when you come into this, you engage the clay. Engage it slowly, as in trying to get that first pull to get the clay situated in the right motion, as in the direction that you're trying to go with it. Right? So you can see how I'm not trying to go crazy in my first pull. I'm just trying to say, hey, you're supposed to be round. You're not supposed to be a square like you were in that first section. Right? From that point, I'm going to come back in. And I might, might just slightly get my bond if I wanted to, if I was worried about it. You know, if I was really trying to keep this piece, I'd probably get my bond being area where I connected those two with a heat gun. 
But before I would do that, I'd come back in and make sure that I had it exactly the way I wanted to, right? With a rib, double rivet. Make sure you're set. Doesn't matter what ribs you want to put on inside, outside, necessarily. Same as what you'd normally do for your throwing abilities. I'm going to use my round on the outside because I want to make sure it's compressed. And I'm going straight up, more or less. Okay. Nothing fancy to it. If you're worried about your bond, this would be the time to stop and actually do the heat gun. Even if it's just a couple minutes. It doesn't have to be hard, unless you're done shaping it and you're going, okay, I'm ready to move this up. Or if it felt like a really soft play that you're using, then you'd stop and hit it with the heat gun. You cannot cheat. You just utilize in another tool that you have for our arsenal. Okay? So make use of it. With that being said, though, and I don't care about necessarily trying to keep anything, you can already see, though, how by just throwing four inches up, popping out a four inch clay extrusion, and I got two inch thick walls, one inch and a half ish, roughly. I already got a pretty massive amount of clay sitting here that I can start throwing. From this point, it's just like throwing any other pot, any other sectional piece, you know, even if it's all wonky like it is right now. Take your time and control your section as in your throne. So you're going to get over the clay, center yourself. You're going to feel that air bubble. You can probably see it. You see how you're throwing it, it kind of pushes it on itself. So you can see how very quickly you can end up with something very tall. Okay? You can also see my torque marks because I'm putting a lot of clay twist power on there. Right? So some of those torque marks, guess what they are? Not necessarily a torque mark, but one that's about to come to you right now. What is that? It's an air bubble. It's an air What do you think that is? You got any idea? No, not this one. No, not this one? Mm -hmm. It is an air bubble, but what does it cause from? What did I cut into the clay to connect to these? It's your seam. It's your seam mark. Right? So, with that seam, one of my seams had a slight air bubble between it. Which one? Well, I didn't pay that close attention. I wasn't trying to be absolutely perfect, right? If I was going to take the time to really finish out a piece that was quality, you definitely make sure that when you connect your two, you don't have an indented area or you can want those to line up really well when you're doing that, okay? To continue up with your throwing. The other thing is, is down here at the bottom, you can see on the inside, I got ripple effects. I don't know if you can see that going around. You guys see those inside? <laughs> those are the same thing. Those are air bubbles kind of trapped under there. Come back in and compress it. They could be air bubbles. They could also just simply be where the clay is torquing and pulling on itself. What's up? I'm going to close my drawer, so if anybody has anything they need to buy, they better come see me. Okay. i got to get some more clay. Cool. If you want, you can go grab that right now. So anywhere that you see that would be an air bubble that you are suspicious of, pop it. Stick it through the needle. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to come back in and double rib my area where I connected it, because I want to make sure that my connection joint is really solid. Does anyone understand, though, why my air bubble is stretching farther around as I go up with it? You're pulling it up to the top. Yeah, you're pulling it up to the top, but what's happening when you throw your clay? It's squeezing the clay so the air bubble is traveling through it. Yeah, but beyond that, you're actually twisting you your clay. As it. you throw, you? right? Every revolution of the wheel, no, so this top part of your clay is ending up farther really? twisted around mm -hmm. the clay. Right. It's literally creating a candy cane shape effect. So with that seam, where it started down here and ended up over here somewhere, that's because as many revolutions as it took, that seam now has stretched this far. So that's why it's important to come back in too and rid to make sure that that clay stays where you want it to. Double ribbing your clay is really going to benefit you. And you can see how just taking the rib to it kind of did that idea of my, my mess ups, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on where I was going to go with this, I could double rib and really get a nice consolidated shape. I could go a little bit thinner, but really I don't want to go too much thinner. I mean, you can see my top edge up here. It's a little off. If I come in and cut this down to be the same height all the way around because my height variation is changing, you'll see that really it's not that it's thin or thick, it's that I got an uneven spot. So 
you see how all the way around it's pretty much the same thickness? I could go a little bit thinner with that. I wouldn't try to go terribly thin. The thing you think about when you're going big, yeah, it's impressive to have something light, but it would be really heartbreaking if you get something massive like I have in my office, that really big base, and you fire it and it slumps because it can't support itself. There's not enough clay down here, thickness, mm -hmm. to hold 100 pounds of clay up here or even 50. That weight's got to disperse itself. Think of yourself as your legs, and you've got two thick for legs. Trying to hold everything else up, right? So think of your bottom, and when you're building and you're coming out like this, you've got to have thicker walls down there. You just don't have a choice. If you don't have thicker walls, it's going to collapse. On your bonds where they go inward and the shoulders and stuff like that too, if you have a shoulder and you have any bond beam where it meets together in there, you better leave a little bit of thickness in there. Don't be ashamed to leave that thickness. Not because you're trying to prove a point. You want your pot to survive. <laughs> and if you don't leave that thickness, it's going to collapse. So depending on what I was going to do with this, I wouldn't go much thinner. Really. I mean, you can see how much clay I gained in height, really. I mean, that quick. Right. That was actually quicker than why I showed you guys going sectional. Right. It really is. But because of the height that was gained on, on the dock. Realistically, if you were to do a couple coils, you could do the same thing. Just stack your coils around and throw those coils as you go up. It's not simple to do a coil sectional top. I could, you know, heat this up and throw another layer on here, and I could have something probably about this tallish in maybe 20 more minutes, mm -hmm. if that. It is very fast. This method is more or less very effective on a piece like Phillips, where you get really wide and it becomes problematic to throw a section that's, you know, getting to 20 inches and you want to flip that over. That's really a lot of clay to try to flip. That's a lot of clay to try to throw and leave anything to stretch that next mm -hmm. section. This would really benefit you in that sense of things. The thing to think about is you don't have to go massive. And if you can't handle massive amounts of clay, it's okay. This is a way to add those smaller pieces on and throw them. You could put one coil on here and throw that one coil. Stop, heat it up a little bit, throw another coil, and just kind of have a therapeutic session with the clay. It does not have to be this exact dye that I showed you guys to use tonight. But in reality, that's what I got. I mean, that is that is sectional throwing. You guys have seen the whole nine yards now of a large pot creation process. Mm -hmm. From throwing to centering to handling a large amount of clay to wedging it to throwing double pieces, flipping them, sectional creation in the sense of flipping your work, attaching it to the, you know, now finding the clay to improvise. So if you use coils and you want to keep the outside showing the coil? You definitely wouldn't be able to do it on a throwing process like this. Mm -hmm. um, my, I know yeah, you it's did just not going to be... Well, you did a big base like that and I was just curious. Oh, okay. So when I was literally doing like just a large base, mm -hmm. let's say you just wanted to extrude just a very large base. That's all that was, was just extruded top, you know, coils mm -hmm. on the machine. What I did with that was taking a tool like this on the inside and smearing all my lines together okay. and then leaving the coils exposed on the outside so I could show the decorative accent of how this base was created. So you didn't do that on the wheel, you did that? No. Well, I set it on a wheel okay. to make my life easy as I would go around mm -hmm. and pull in the clay up, smearing it together. Otherwise, you just left it. And that is another option too, is you could definitely just extrude a large amount of coils and just keep adding those coils up mm -hmm. and build yourself a base that way. Mm -hmm. That's usually my go-to if I'm gonna go do a demonstration somewhere and they need to get people's attention very quickly. Yeah. Come with three amount done of coils and you sit there and coil build, it's really fascinating mm -hmm. because in no time you can have a really large pot very quickly. And, it, and if you love throwing on the wheel, there's nothing wrong with doing that, it's actually very, uh, very, very therapeutic to do that. I really enjoyed it. I just did it recently. I was thinking about how it was really fun to just sit there and watch the kids come to life with their, they, go, they walk by with a trainer or something, 10 minutes goes by and they come back you got a base all of a sudden. Yeah, it's that quick. Especially when you have a coil extrusion machine, you pump those coils out of there. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with throwing them. You know, I, that quickly I added two pieces on and you went up. Same thing with doing a coil pod that way. Get whatever die, as in hole, you know, that you would want. The thicker your coils are, the faster your piece is going to climb, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, the thicker your coils are, the bigger your piece should ultimately be. If you want really thin, delicate coils, it's really impressive, but just remember it's really hard to work with. But it is cool to have something thin that way. And since you're not necessarily adding water to it in that throwing process, you can get really thin and get crazy shapes with it and just using your heat guns to heat up and speed up the process and 
go high. But if you go too big, you understand if you go really massive and you get up really tall, there's no weight up there, or there's too much weight up there, and there's not enough clay to support the weight that's up there. So think about that when you're talking the size of your work. You've got to have girth in your clay. Otherwise, you guys, that's literally what I got for you. I mean, it was a very easy demo in that sense. That's why I tried to give you as much as we could the first day. Second day, you know, of demonstration, you've kind of seen a whole different process, but a little bit less. Third day, a little bit less in the sense of now you've seen all three, and now you can run with your idea and hopefully finish out a piece out of here. Do you have questions, Esther? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No? It's no. straightforward, right? I mean, for me. No, that die is a pretty set and standard, right? For what that guy has in this, not necessarily as far as set and standard of like the size of pot you wanted to do, mm -hmm. because just because it's a thick piece to begin with, mm -hmm. you can throw it really thin. It's just that it's that standard die shape from the beginning, but really, you could have a thinner piece at the bottom and slide it into the die, and as you throw and pull up, it'll still do what you need it to do. Right. You just make sure that it's connected. If it's not connected down here where your bond is, you got a problem to begin with. You know, because right. it won't it won't allow you to, to continue the throwing process and pull it up. And with that, if I was gonna do another section on here and I was gonna do the die idea, do the same thing. Round it out, give yourself a, a U shape if you will on that top edge. So if I was gonna, you know, say I was done with this and I wanted to, you know, move up to another coil, because then I was done throwing, I would come back in, probably recompress my top edge a little bit, like I'm doing right now with the chamois. You could do it this way. Or you could use your fingers like we talked about. You know? But that would be my next section. I would stop from that point, have a section on. Then when I hit the next section with, you know, a rib to match them up, I would just continue out. my shape. We didn't talk about anything, Philip, except the same how we would continue forward and that we, you guys have seen the whole process literally you know, from sectional throwing. All we've done was show you day one how to handle the clay, not hurt yourself, the wedging in the process, the centering large amounts of clay. Um, day two of demo, you know, we talked about how to do the sectional flipping it over, all that good stuff and, and doing it. And I was talking to them about how this idea of using the die out of the coil extrusion machine is going to be the best bet for large pieces like yeah, yours, you know, because it's really hard to center and flip over large amounts of clay, and then actually have anything left to throw. You'd have to throw more like 30 pounds, maybe 35 or even 40. Yeah, it would be that. Probably about 30, 35 pounds. And it was a pain, wasn't it, to do that? Yeah, like yeah, but it's, yeah. <coughs> because it's got slip. But <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's just something to think about, you know. I mean, otherwise, I mean, if I was going to go up, I would just, you know, reload the machine and just keep going up. I mean, you, it, very quickly with using the coil extrusion machine, you can gain height just like if you were going to do a coil base. That was the other thing we talked about is using the machine to do just a basic coil pop. You could sit here and, and add your coils on and just slip the inside of your coils together, smearing them, if you will, blending them, however you want to refer to it as, and leaving the outside of the coils to be shown decoratively. Yeah. and not actually throw them, but use the wheel as a turntable more or less, and smearing the coils together, and then you can create a very, very unique shape that way too, and also okay. very traditional. After putting all that up on that one coil, you got to dry it again? Yep, so then, from this point, I would dry this all the way up, just like I would if I was going to do another coil. But use your best mind of interest on this. What can you handle? What can the clay handle? Because for me to say that everybody has to dry it out, no, I know people that can sit down and just keep going. What stops you is when it starts to slump, when it twists and it slumps and, and loses shape on you. That's when you should stop and have hit it with a heat gun. And you're probably too late by that point. Now let's say that you had a problem and that was happening. I got a twist in here that I just can't get rid of, but it's soft. How would I get rid of that? Go the opposite way. There you go. Exactly. So this is where the wheels benefit you. If you spin the wheel the opposite way now, and you come into the clay and engage the clay the opposite way, you know, if I was coming in here and work from the opposite side now, that twist, so the whole thing we're talking about with that centrifugal twist that's taking place, like a spiral going up, it's going the opposite way. You're going the opposite way, so you're straightening <coughs> out. But also remember, you're undoing that twist, so you're unbending the clay, which is fine to do. It's just that as you go back the other way now, you're going to start to make it try to move the other way, so you're adding that work time into it. So probably <coughs> once you get that twist to disappear out of your work that's making an oblong shape, you want to heat gun it. Because if not, and you try to spin it the other way, 
you're not necessarily adding water to it, but you're adding work time, which is going to make your slate, your clay break down also very quickly. So if I had a wonk in it, I could come in. I got a slight wonk, but not a big one. You know, I'm not even using water. I'm just taking my fingers and going up with it. Okay. Same idea. Right, but you're working on the opposite side of the wheel. So it'd be like you got to attempt the MCX X race. I would say if you're not comfortable doing that, try it. Get comfortable. Yeah, you're we're in here. You're having fun. You're playing in that sense of all the techniques that you guys have been trying this whole time. You haven't really necessarily done and have been successful about it. If you had, I don't think you've been as successful as you have been this time around. <laughs> so all you've done is play, experiment, test. I figured that out on my own. Yep. I said, look, it's, it's, it's twisting like that, so I'll just go that side and bring it back. Yep. For me, it's a, I didn't, the problem is I didn't heat gun it. Yep, exactly. So if you don't stop, you know, to heat gun that up, it's going to cause you a problem. You know, the other thing I would stop and do is pop any air bubbles you got in there. You know, I mean, my air bubbles came from just being very lazy with my coil extrusion process. You know, I took pieces and pushed them in and banged them in. Try to fill that, the auger shape, if you will, with as much clay as possible without tearing the clay apart. So not putting five pieces in there to make up one chunk of clay, because guaranteed you will make an air bottle in that clay. Other than that, not sectional for me, guys. That's, that's Big Pops Class 101. Okay. Now it's in your hands to just experiment, okay. run with it, play with you, it, you see what happens. Thing, you filled that thing up. Mm -hmm. You're only going to be able to go half of that pot. So yep. I feel that You're probably going to have to fill it up three, four, four five, five times, times. times. you have to get around. So the other important thing is, is every time you cut that and make a bond, that's another weak point, right? So make sure that your bonds are really well so cut. Like Phillips, he could also go with a thinner coil. Yeah, he could go with a thinner coil. Mm -hmm. Except I, you know, that means I would have to, I'd still have to throw as many coils. Yeah, you're still gonna have to do more coils. So it's just determining what do you want to work with? You know, more of these shapes? Or right. well, more coil shapes. This is going to gain height a little bit faster. In that sense, things because I went up about I don't know, let's say about five inches maybe, and I could definitely go maybe another inch and a half with it, making this and feel confident because it would match what the bottom is. But I'm just calling it quits because there's no purpose in it. It's just pure demonstration for you guys to see how to use that machine. Unless you would like me to show you again another section I'll put on top of it. So otherwise, there's no purpose in it. Yeah, I'd rather you guys get to use the machine tonight. And mm -hmm. Now you got two hours, an hour and an hour and 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sound okay. like your plan? Sounds good. Any questions? No? no? Okay, cool.